Hi, I'm Richard Murphy. I've been talking about banks and money. And banks and money are related subjects, of course. If we didn't have money, we wouldn't need banks. If we wouldn't have banks, they'd have nothing to do. But banks don't create all the money that we use. I've explained how if you take a loan from a bank, you and the bank together create new money. And it's a phenomenal experience that very few people understand, very few economists understand, and very few politicians understand, but which happens day in, day out. But that's not the only way that money is made. Tiny amounts of our money in the UK, and in other countries, are made on printing presses. That's these things. And we also mint some coins. Actually, the total value of what we call money in the UK that is represented by notes and coins is maybe 3% of the total. It's a small part. 97% of all money is bank deposits accounts of some sort. It's electronic. It's literally the value printed on a bank statement with nothing behind it. But that isn't the only way in which money is made. Governments also make money. Not only do governments guarantee our relationship with banks by literally guaranteeing our deposits with banks if we have money in banks up to £85,000, therefore supporting every bank and its promise to pay, but they also guarantee to us that they will in effect stand behind banks because they regulate them. The government sets up the regulators who look at banks and they set very tight rules about how much money banks must hold to make sure that they're always able to pay us if ever we demand our money back from them. As we know from experience in 2007 when Northern Rock failed, if a bank comes to the point of crisis, we know the government will step in and honour the payments that the bank owes because that's what they did with Northern Rock. So the government has very obviously a very clear role in banking, but it's also got a very big role with regard to money. Because there's something very odd about the government, which is quite distinct and different from the relationship between us and commercial banks. Commercial banks can't lend money to themselves to bail themselves out. They obviously can't make a promise to pay themselves. It doesn't make any sense. It's like me promising to pay myself and then saying I've made money. Well, I obviously haven't. There's nobody else involved in the process. So the promise is meaningless. And that's true also of commercial banks. But actually, the government and the Bank of England do promise to pay each other. And that relationship is decidedly meaningful. Since 1866, there's been a Bank of England regulation, it's governed by a thing called the Audit and Exchequer Departments Act. So don't worry too much about it. But what it says is that if the government tells the Bank of England to make a payment, the Bank of England has no choice but literally make that payment. And it does, and it always has. And that is the way that every single pound that the government spends gets spent. If you are in receipt of a government benefit, call it a pension, call it job seekers allowance, call it whatever, you will be paid in that way, through your commercial bank, but ultimately by the government telling the Bank of England to pay your commercial bank to then pay you. If you are employed by the NHS, or you're a civil servant, or you're a teacher, or whatever else, you will be paid because the government tells the Bank of England to pay a commercial bank to pay you. That's how the system works. So how is it that the government can lend money to itself? Well, that's because the Bank of England looks notionally, at least, independent from the government. So they can promise to pay each other. And there's a very important part in the equation. The Bank of England offers the government an overdraft. Effectively, it runs one every day, day in and out. That overdraft can be cleared by the government. It's cleared using money. The money actually that it's spent into the economy is repaid to it. What do I mean? Why is it repaid to it? Well, that's tax, of course. The government taxes us and reclaims the money it has spent. So what the Bank of England knows is that the person it's lending to, who happens to own it, also has the power to do something which no one privately has got, and that is impose a tax. After all, you can't impose a tax, I can't impose a tax, nobody can impose a tax, but the government. But the government can. And actually, 
The promise that is printed on a banknote, which says, I promise to pay the bearer on demand, is fulfilled because the government guarantees it will accept back its own money in settlement of the tax bills that it creates. In fact, it won't accept anything else but that money to settle the tax bills that it creates. Yeah, don't tell me you can pay in euros on the HM Revenue and Customs website. You can, but they translate it into sterling first. So you do always pay in the government created money. So the reality is the government's promise to pay, which the Bank of England respects, is backed up by something which no one else has got, the power to tax. And it's that power to tax that gives the money its value. Because if this wasn't backed up by a really powerful promise, why would we accept it as having value to the value of 20 quid? Because the government says, we will accept this in settlement of 20 pounds of your tax liability. And that's what gives the government its power to pay. And that's why, although no other bank can lend to itself, Effectively, the Bank of England can lend to the government, which owns it, to create new money within a government banking cycle in a way that is different, totally different, from the commercial banking cycle. So the government creates money, the banks create money, the commercial banks create money. You can't spot the difference once they're in use, but they actually work in very different ways. One is called commercial bank money, the other is actually called base money, that's the government created money, the money that underpins our whole economy. And that is a really important distinction to make. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in what I've been saying in this video, please subscribe. There is a button below the viewing screen. If you're interested in what I have to say on Twitter, I'm at Richard J. Murphy on that medium. If you want to look at my blog, that's taxresearch.org.uk. And we have a Facebook page as well, Richard J. Murphy. So one of those things will get you more information on what this video series is about. And I hope I'll see you again soon.